Okay, just finished converting Noble's radio to MOSFET. I used FQP 13N10s. I picked up a couple of watts uh, by changing R183 to a 6 point, or actually it was a 5.6 ohm. And also adding the 100 ohm resistor from pin 10 of IC5 to ground. Uh, you can see I removed a whole bunch of stuff uh, and swapped out the VRs to 100k ohm VRs. I used a uh, 330k ohm resistor in between, uh, well I lifted the end of L43 and hooked it up there to go to pin 1, L43 goes to pin 1, the gate pin of the MOSFET. You can see that uh, Q38 or TR38, whatever you want to call it, now has the uh, EN396DR going from gate to source. And source is ground on these, it's like emitter. Uh, drain is like the collector. Okay, changed uh, C152 to a 1500 pickle ferret. Uh, TR36 now has an EN396 FN from pin 1 to pin 3 or gate to source. Okay. And I changed R17 to a, what is that, a 27, yeah, 27K ohm. And set the bias voltage at about 3.4, 3.5, and that way the radio still keys up. Uh, if you set the bias too high on these, the radio won't key up because it kills that 8 volt transmit voltage that it's using to set the bias on the finals. Alright. So anyway, on VR9, the knockdown resistor is in between the VR and I used the end of L43, but I could have just replaced L43 with the 330. But I chose not to do that. I chose to keep the toroid in line. And those are Galaxy toroids from uh, where I replaced those with 10 ohm half watt resistors. And I used a uh, just a zero ohm resistor to connect VR8 to... <coughs> Another one of those toroid jumpers, also going to the gate, pin 1 of TR36. And I removed a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, <coughs> C151, L40, Q37, C149, R181, and you replace R181 with a jumper. Uh, removed R209, C200, C226, and Q38. Okay, and I replaced 36 and 38 with uh, FQP 13 N10s. Seeing pretty good power out of the radio. A few more watts than what it does stock. I'm getting about 22, 23 watts peak uh, on 2 meters. Not, not the frequency 2 meters, but on 2 uh, RF power meters reading peak wattage seeing a little over 22 watts on both of them and that's about it okay the audio sounds pretty good on my Ranger but I got to write up what I did to uh, replace the finals with MOSFETs it's, it's pretty much it's pretty easy you mostly have to get rid of all those supporting components including uh, what is that Q37 uh, the bias regulator transistor you get rid of that too uh, TR37 I think it's called but you get rid of uh, a lot of stuff including the MV1Ys get rid of those two unsolder them pull them out of the board you don't need them anymore <coughs> Okay, now if I think of anything else, I'll add to this.
Okay, my instructions are a little scattered at the moment. I got to refine them, but I'll uh, I'll post them later. Uh, you're going to be replacing VR9 and VR8 with 100k ohm uh, variable resistors pots. They're not really pots. These are variable resistors that go in circuit. Okay. Uh, another thing to remember not all 148s have these but see that right there there's a electrolytic that is in some of them if it's there take it out okay it'll keep the radio from keying up all right now you can see over here what I did I used a 330 K ohm and I just basically lifted the end of L43 because L43 connects directly to the gate pin of TR38. So I just lifted the end of L43 and dropped that 330K in place of it and soldered them together there. So the 330K is inserted in between uh, VR9 and L43. Okay, you got to have that in there. All right, now, see all these little capacitors, and there's a resistor there. That's, what is that, R208, uh, C200. I think that's, what is that, C226. All those come out, okay? Uh, R181 comes out. You need to take it out. Now, I, L43 needs to come out too but you can see I used it to connect to pin 1 of the final R181 comes out and you replace him with a jumper let's see can you see that yeah y'all can see that all right this guy C152 is a 470 picofarad he comes out and you replace him with a 1500 picofarad Okay, now I used a zero ohm resistor to go from the center of VR8 through the old L40 to pin 1, the gate pin of Q36 or TR36, excuse me. Okay, you got to have that. Now, also for TR36. You're going to need an EN396FN. Okay. It goes from pin 1 to pin 3, or gate to source. The center pin, what used to be the collector, is the drain on these. Okay. Same thing with this guy, only you're using an EFN396DR. A little bit of difference in resistance. Okay, and I just dropped that right in C226's holes. They lined up perfect. You can see there's C226 right there. Okay, it just drops in the C226's holes. Make sure you put the positive towards pin 1, which is on this side of the transistor. Okay. Uh, out of all of the MOSFETs that I've tried, the FQP13N10s produce the most power. I get about almost 30 watts peak out of this and about uh, eh, right in between 12 and 15 watts RMS. Okay, but all this Q37 comes out. Uh, I already told you L40 comes out and you replace VR8 with a 100k ohm. And underneath here, let's see, I gotta see if I can turn that around where you can see that a little better. Right down there, R17. Replace R17 with a 27 to 30. K ohm resistor, quarter watt resistor. 
take R17 out, replace him with a uh, 27K to 30K ohm resistor. Don't go below 27K or the radio won't key up. Okay, I think that about does it. Oh, uh, a lot of crap to take out. And don't forget to insert a jumper in place of R81 right there in the back. But uh, I mean, once you get all those old components out, there's not much to it. Uh, the MV1Ys that were mounted on the back, back here, you don't need those anymore. Take those out, unsolder them from the board, get them out of the way so they don't interfere with your circuit. Uh, I think that's all. But the parts you're going to remove, let me see if I can list them out here. R209, C200, C226, that 47 microfarad electrolytic that's, that goes in between these two guys. If it's there, take it out. There's no number for it. Okay. Okay. Put the jumper in, in place of R181. Replace C152 with a 1500, actually a 1000 to a 1500 picofarad. Any of those will do. Uh, of course, replace the two uh, semiconductor finals with uh, MOSFETs. Remove the MV1Ys, the little temperature sensing diodes. And let's see, what else, what else, what else? I've already told you which EN parts to use. Okay, the next thing you want to do is up here next to the pre-driver, there's a resistor. I don't know if you can see him or not. Right there, he's a 10 ohm. His number is R183. You want to replace him with a 5.6 ohm resistor. 5.6. Okay. And then on the bottom of the board, you want to add that tiny little 100k ohm resistor between pin 10 and ground. Okay, pin 10 and ground. All right, if your radio is not keying, this means you're drawing too much current from this circuit. And where you can measure that is right here. This, this run that runs along here is the 8-volt transmit circuit. So if your radio is not transmitting, take a look at that. You're probably pulling it down to nothing. So that's why we include the, uh, the 27 to 30K ohm resistor and then the uh, 330k ohm resistor at the uh, at VR9 to knock down some of the current draw, okay, and drop the voltage. You want about 3.6 volts on the driver, and you measure that at the gate, okay, 3.6 volts on the driver, and then on the final, 3.2 to 3.3 volts. You adjust it with the uh, VRs that we replaced, VR8 and VR9. Okay, VR9 is the driver adjustment. VR8 is the final adjustment. Okay, make sure you unplug these two wires before you try to set the bias. Okay, this is your 12 volts radio transmitter if these are plugged up. So make sure you disconnect these two before you try to set the bias with VR9 and VR8. Okay, again, set VR8 for 3.2 to 3.3 and read that on the gate, which I can read it right here because this guy connects directly to pin 1, which is the gate of that transistor. And then uh, on this guy here, I can measure it right there. And you want him set at 3.6. 3.6, 3.65, but not any more than that. Okay. All right. Like I said, I used uh, the EQP 13N10s 
for this one. 520s work pretty good. Uh, the 520N works pretty good. The original IR 520s, uh, they work really well. It's, just about any of them will, will work well. Okay, but I, I like the FQP 13N10s in these. Don't forget to add your EN components, uh, Eloflow components, EN uh, 396DR for the driver, and EN 396FN for the final. It's pretty easy to remember. FN for final, DR for driver. Okay. All right. I hope this helps someone. I've had quite a few questions about converting these radios to MOSFET. I resisted for a long time because you can pretty much get the uh, new Eloflow replacements for the 2166 and the 1969 and they work really well. So unless you just want to put cheap MOSFETs in here and you can do that. Just got to purchase a few support components like the uh, 100k pots all right okay guys i hope you all enjoyed the video the how-to video 7-3 everybody